Hendry, good overhead kick to Hawley. And sweeps a good ball out to uh, Mark Ellis. Redford's the defender in front of him. Well picked out by Shipley. And we've actually got a fire in the stand on the far side of the ground. Now these are extraordinary scenes at Valley Parade. It's supposed to be a day of celebration. One hopes the stand doesn't burn down. And the two and a half thousand people in that stand are panicking. They are frantic to get out. And that is a catastrophic sight for Bradford City Football Club. And that person there looks to be burning. This is awful. They came to celebrate the club's promotion to the second division for the first time in 50 years, and now they're running for their lives. Bodies are being dragged away from that stand. Hopefully now, as I look across the ground, everybody is out. The police have done a manful job because the rafters have been coming down on them, and you can see the exhaustion and the panic on the faces of some of those people there. I now look at a sad and tragic sight. The ambulance is beginning to arrive, and the stand is almost gone. We've come to watch the football. This is human tragedy. every disaster comes good. My name is Richard Stanford. Uh, I am the Stadium Management and Safety Officer uh, for Wickham Wanderers and London Wars and my nickname is Stan. I've been here nine years now, um, coming into my tenth football season uh, and it's been a joy. So let's make a start. Today's game, MK Dons, okay? Kick-off will be at 1500. We are um, expecting quite a good turnout now with the weather. The procedures what we incorporate in this stadium is uh, uh, we're at home this Saturday to MK Dons, but a pre-match inspection actually took 48 hours. We actually do a, a pre-match inspection 48 hours, then we do one 24 hours, and then we do a match day inspection. Uh, match day inspection. We are expecting 1,500 from MK Dons. Most of those people, that 1,200, would no doubt try and go and sit in their seats. Okay, so let them sit there, but it is unreserved seating. Then we come to the match day, if there's still some problems, I still have a duty plumber, a duty electrician on site, I've got a maintenance team on site. Then, after I've done my inspection, you have the stand supervisors and they come and check their stand. My name is Dave Scrivens and my job title is, is steward. My name's Kevin, my main job here is the turnstile supervisor. Uh, we have a lot of training during the season, and uh, during the close season, uh, for well, obviously for crowd regulations and things like that. What training? Well, since I've been here at Adams Park, I've gained more qualifications than I ever got at school. I work here Monday to Friday, and complacency is a word I don't like to use, but we can walk past uh, things on a daily basis and take no notice of it, where a new set of eyes looks at it and think, that's not right. So there's a backup for a backup. So after that, come half past one, if everything's tiggly boot, then it's safe to let the public in, we can let them in. Restricted arms as per your ground regulations, okay? So if anyone does try and bring any drink in, use common sense. All these things, people bringing knives into the stadium, razor blades, uh, which is quite common because you can hide them in baseball caps. We've had a couple of minor incidents with uh, uh, people's health, but then we've uh, responded to them very quickly. That is one of the major downfalls of it. You don't know what people are going to do on the day. You no, know, it's everything about training, you know. People try and hide things, you know. We're a great country to, to trying to hide cans of beer. OK, you might not say a can of beer is an offensive weapon, but when you hurl a can of beer through the air and it hits someone, or you play a referee, or even a 50 pence coin, it can knock you out. Yeah, our safety record is a lot better. We're the ones who won the award, and we're the ones who keep getting higher rankings, OK? 
now with uh, new legislation and different rules and regulations and stewards have to have an MVQ2, supervisors and MVQ3 and even me as a safety officer you've got to have an MVQ4 so... No, how are we doing? Alright. Are you doing your right? yeah. again, yeah. We can't dictate what happens onto the pitch in any shape or form, we can't dictate that. Everyone wants to watch a winning team but sometimes teams have to lose. The only thing we can do is try to make it um, a more of an eventful thing. In America, you don't just go to watch the game, you go for the bit before, the bit at half time and the bit at the end, where it's like an all day thing. Historically, football, you're talking 90 minutes. No one wants to come to a football game three or four hours before and spend two hours afterwards. You know, historically, what we're taught as, as kids you watch the game of football, get in the car straight away, turn on, in my time it was Radio 2, now it's Radio 5, get the other results coming in. So what we're trying to do is make it more customer focused where we're trying to put more activities on for the children. You please the kids, you please the adults. If mum and dad are happy, the kids are happy. my gut feeling watching the Hillsborough disaster. That's the first time I've ever been asked that question since I've been a safety officer. And that was a very, very good question because when I watched it, it was like you wanted to climb into the TV and help those people out. Um, and it was very, very sad. Um, and it was even sadder watching the Bradford fire disaster when you actually see people running out and their hair burning and police officers taking their jackets off and doing it. And then they were using the old billboards as stretchers. Um, it was very, very hard, very, very emotional um, because we don't want to see any disasters in this country. Uh, we're very, very proud of our safety record in this country. But you were angry at the same time because the police were trying to marshal people into an area they shouldn't be. Um, and many years ago I went to Hillsborough because I'm a safety officer and we had a meeting there and I actually went there for the first time and there was an eerie feeling then. <laughs> We've learned from these disasters is basically uh, not to chain fire exit doors up, uh, listen to people. Um, even in a crowded situation, people have still got a voice. It's a shame people lost their lives. And it's a sorry state of affairs that it takes a disaster to improve things, and it shouldn't be like that. Um, I can see one day a government saying, right, it's going to be the same rules and regulations for football, cricket, rugby, that type of thing. I think that will be a massive improvement because from a customer point of view, our job is to make sure they're safe. If stewards are not safe, the public ain't safe, and there's a lot of responsibility uh, on a match day as a safety officer. We do not want another disaster. It didn't happen for the good, but in one respect it did. Out of every disaster comes good.